This video is put together to assist you in calibrating a Viper 4 controller to a dry application. In this video, we happen to be using a 2 bin Air Max and we're calibrating the back bin, but the exact same procedure is to be used whether you're using an air machine or a spinner, 2 bin or single bin machine. The procedure is the exact same. One thing you need to remember is, is we need to purge the belt before we get started, which means run fertilizer all the way back until the fertilizer is ready to fall off and be caught. Um, we need to think about the scales that we're using to catch this and weigh this product. Uh, a lot of platform scales are on 20 pound brakes. That's not the greatest thing to use. Uh, we were fortunate on this video that we were using the scales on a blender that were a five pound brake. We can get a lot closer and be a lot more accurate when we have a five pound brake scale. We're catching 800 pounds in this test. Uh, really wouldn't want to catch any less than that, but we choose 800 pounds because the buckets that we use in this industry are pretty easily hold 800 pounds and we don't have to shovel it to keep 800 pounds in it. It wouldn't be a bad idea to watch the video that is also on here that explains the correct procedure to use a density scale so that we are accurate when we are getting our density and we use that same procedure every time we calculate density. Have, uh, we're going to calibrate the back bin of an air machine with a Viper 4 today. First thing we're going to do is going to access product control. In the product control screen we're going to select the back bin. Once we're into the back bin we're going to go to the calibration tab which is the third tab over. We're going to check our product density which is 66. We're going to go now into our calibration icon. What this screen is telling us is that with a density of 66, a spreader cal of 805, that we're going to go ahead and try our first test. Our start weight needs to be zero. So this is the weight of the product in the bucket or the weight of your machine. In this case, we're going to use zero. We're going to select dump product. Okay, we're going to make sure, yes, there is nobody close to the machine and we're getting ready to dump product. Okay, we go ahead and hit the master switch. We hold down on the up arrow until the product starts to dispense. I usually hold this arrow until it jumps by about 10 pounds. You can let go of the button. We'll proceed to watch the dump until we got about 800 pounds in the bucket. If we're not running fast enough or dispensing fast enough, we can hold up, speed this process up a little bit. As we get close to 800 pounds, we'll stop the, we'll stop the machine by hitting our master switch, and now we'll go get a weight on our product. So we weighed 835 pounds of product, so we're going to hit end calibration. We're going to enter 835, and then we're going to let the system calibrate or calculate the new constant. So it says our new spreader constant needs to be 778. So our old constant was 805. Our new constant, based on the 835 pounds that we weighed, our new constant needs to be 778. So we're going to select apply. And we're going to start that process all over again. For this video and the essence of time, just so you know, we ran that process two more times until we got it pretty close. You might ask what pretty close is. Pretty close is the variance between what the rate controller said we did and what the scale actually said we did was less than the scale break. So we had a two or three pound difference. We had a five pound break scale. So if you had a 15 pound difference on a 20 pound break scale that's pretty close okay the weight of the product that we just dumped was 810 pounds so you can see that the volume that the machine dumped was 808 our actual weight was 810 that's getting very close so our new end weight is going to be 810 we're going to enter that here we're going to let the system calculate our new constant so the controller weight 808 our end weight was 810 our current spreader constant was 769. The system wants to adjust it by a few points, and you can, we can adjust it, but it's getting very close. So either one of these numbers are going to be very accurate for your next spread job.